All right, so if you are here in the session, it means that you're interested by uh, having a comparison between different runtime agents, security runtime agents. Uh, so in the abstract, I was initially covering Tetragon, Cubarmer, and Falco, and then when I was doing the benchmark, I say, what, what about adding another one? So I just added Tracy. So uh, I'm sorry if you, you're gonna have more slides just to cover another solution. I'm really sorry about that, and I hope you will enjoy. Um, I like to have energy from the crowd, otherwise it's gonna be boring, me, me talking, so try to, to be interactive, that would be great. So let uh, introduce myself briefly. My name is Henrik Rexed. I am a cloud native advocate at Dynatrace, so it's been about four years, mainly specializing in uh, uh, Kubernetes and uh, observability in general, and then I started to be very interested in security because I think security is almost like a, 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 a small part of observability as well. Um, so, and prior to that, I've been spending all my career as a performance engineer, so testing, breaking, tuning things, I mean, I, I, at least having fun. So that's why performance is still on my heart, so I try to produce content when I have time on a YouTube channel called Perfbytes on the bottom. For those who never heard about it and you're interested in Perfbytes and per performance engineering mythology, check it out, it's out there. And since three years now, I, I started a YouTube channel called Is It Observable? Uh, and uh, same thing, the QR code is here. And if you're interested, you can check it out. So before we start, I need to have a disclaimer. When I prepared all those tests, I can guarantee that no eagle, no shields, uh, no uh, Spartan has been armed when building this presentation. So I'm, I was very gentle with all, each of those tools, and I can guarantee that they were still running, no, no issues on that side. Uh, the intention in here of this, prod, of this presentation is not to blame any tool. The idea is to f look at the tool, share the feedback to the projects, and again, may, this main objective of this presentation is give you some tips, some, uh, yeah, share the results of this benchmark, and help you to pick and choose which agents fits the most within your environment. So I think we can start. Welcome to the Cube Olympics 2024 Salt Lake City. Uh, I hope you are all enjoy uh, this event. Uh, we all know these events because it's very, it happens every year and uh, we're all supporting teams. And for those who never heard about the Cube Olympics, let me remind the principle. So there are various practice in this, uh, in this uh, event where we have different uh, categories and every tool is competing into, between each other. So we have the community lifting, uh, we have the develop developer experience, we have the observability layer, uh, we have security. And if you're in this room, sorry, we will cover mainly one of the sections of the sport, which is the runtime security agent. So if you are looking for observability uh, competition, you should go in another room because I won't cover observability today. All right, so um, let's present the athletes of this super final. The super final will be covered through Falco. So Falco has been trained by the Cystic teams. He's been out there since many years. And he has uh, involved with eBPF over time and provides a really interesting approach. So he's trained, he knows how to do things. We'll see he has advantage and disadvantage. Uh, the second uh, competitor is Tetragon. Tetragon coming from the Cilium Dojo. Uh, he's been born with eBPF, so he's He's embracing EBPF, whatever he's doing. So it's very powerful, you'll see. Uh, and, we, and we'll see if he has advantage in this competition. Uh, the third uh, competitor is Cubarmer, the Spartan, the new player of the market, I would say. Uh, he sees the security in a different angle compared to the other uh, competitors. And he is also, of course, being trained through EBPF. So EBPF is also part of his uh, mentality and his culture as well. And last, we have Tracy coming from Aqua Security. Uh, they have been doing different open source projects. Tracy is one of them. Uh, if you probably know another project that they have provided on the market called Trivi Operator that do a lot of image scanning and everything. Uh, so Tracy has been out there since a couple of times. A couple of users are using it. Uh, so let's see if Tracy is interesting in this final and see the, the, how it goes uh, with this competition. So if you stay here, I hope you will stay with me, honestly. Uh, we will touch base on a few things. I will basically try to compare and measure uh, each agent based on different criteria. So the experience to build the policies and construct uh, the uh, security enforcement that you wanna have. 
Then we will cover the components, because every solution will require components running in your environment. And last, there is the observability piece, because of course, when you're running an agent, but you don't see what happens, it's gonna be quite, quite annoying. So we need also to get feedback somehow. Um, and also to one interesting angle that we'll cover at the last is performance, because at the end, it's great to have agents running there, but if they are very expensive, then yeah, we can consider maybe to removing some policies. So we'll have different stage. And before we go to the stage, let me remind the rules of this competition. So we're gonna cover a couple of sections. Uh, we will have capture and filter, which is a bit the same, uh, same approach. So that will be mainly the design aspect. So I will try to re remind what we need in these sections and what each of solutions cover in that section. Then we will measure, for, of course, see the, the components involved, what are the components that we need to run those agents. Uh, we will look at the observability again, like I mentioned, and last, the important aspect is the performance. So, are you ready for the stage one? Yes. Okay. okay, so I need your help. So stage one, and you say components, okay? Stage one? Ah, great, I, I love it. All right, so let me remind the things. So components, here we need to capture events that will happen in your system. And usually those uh, events is on the kernel, so the best way to do it is to rely on eBPF agents. So what we expect from a component perspective at the end, obviously, is to have a daemon set in our cluster, and that daemon set will deploy those eBPF probes. So that will be the mandatory requirement when we deal with those uh, solutions uh, in each solution that we cover. So let's cover each solution. So first, we have Falco. So Falco, of course, has this daemon set, uh, as expected, and then he has another component called the Falco server, which is, we'll touch base on later, it's mainly a rule-based engine. So it's not an operator, it's a server. And then you will see that it's not required, but we, we usually use it. It's Falco Psychic, because at the end we need to have some get the data out of Falco, and Falco Psyche will be a, a component that we may, may use at the end. Then we have Tetragon. Tetragon, sim, uh, out of the, just the agents, it has an operator. So if you have an operator, it means that you have CRDs. So the CRDs are there mainly to help us design those policies and introduce, in fact, two CRDs, uh, and we'll see, we'll touch base on them later. We have CubeArmor, CubeArmor, same thing, we still have the agents, and then you have an operator, as expected, that introduce more CRDs. We have the configuration, we have the, uh, we'll touch the cluster, the, the one from the namespace, the one for uh, the host and so on. And then it has two extra components. So you have a control server, or, or the name I don't remember, but it's control something. And then we have the cube, uh, the relay server. And uh, when I look, and so there's more workload involved behind the scene. Um, so maybe that brings an advantage somehow with the solution. So we'll touch base on this later on. Then we have Tracy. Tracy is a bit similar to Tetragon. The agent, the operator, which means we have CRDs. And here there's only one CRD exposed. Uh, it's the one that will configure our main uh, policy. So at the end here, there's no clear winner. Uh, it's, we just see that Kubarmer brings more workload in our cluster. We will, does it bring value? I don't know, we'll, we'll see later on, on the performance aspect. So let's go move on to the next stage. So stage two. Ah, great, thank you. All right, so capture and filter. What do we expect from the capture and filter? So capture, uh, usually a suspicious event in the cluster is, I don't know, I'm running a process, a uh, suspicious process spin up, and then he wants to reach out to an, a file or doing some network activities. So I need to capture process information. I need to capture file access information. I need to, to capture those network details and everything. But capturing those events is great, but we need to have to, to store details about it. So the process name, the process path, the executable, the binary. Uh, we need to have the, the file, the, all the file details. Uh, if, if who, which user triggered that action, which group, which capabilities, uh, which namespace from the kernel perspective. Um, and of course, uh, we need Kubernetes metadata because at the end we need to attach it to a workload or to a container. So that is what we expect when we capture. And when we filter, so we have events with data, and then of course we don't want to sniff the entire traffic of the cluster, that will be very expensive. So we want to be able to filter, say, oh, please just look at this specific process or specific file 
So then having the options to filter by process, by details, by user details, by namespace, spot, whatever, that is really important. The other thing which is, I think, not a required, but it helps to uh, simplify the usage of the solution is to have predefined rules. Because at the end, security, usually you have common pattern of attacks. So having rules that are predefined pre for us and not having this journey of configuring them, that is so great because you don't have to re create the wheel. So predefined rules, I think, from my perspective, is important. And last, of course, detecting things is great, but being able to react, it's, it's much better. So let's see the Oyster solution. So starting with Falco. So Falco here, to remind, it's, it's, a, it's a rule-based engine. So the idea is that you produce log if an event comes in in the rule-based engine server and says, okay, it match, so I'm gonna throw a, 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 an event, a Falco event based on the rule. So at the end, usually um, most of us in the industry, we use their daemon sets, so the kernel agents that will capture those kernel events. So then you can build the rules based on the kernel events. But you can have also plugins, external data coming in. And the great thing is you have SDK, which means if you wanna, I don't know, create your custom uh, rule that detects something outside of the cluster and feed it into to, to Falco, that is actually possible. But if we, man if we focus just on the Falco agent, on the kernel, of course, we'll have the, the process details, uh, the syscalls, everything we mentioned before, it will be there. Uh, so don't worry, you will have all the things required to build your rules. Uh, in terms of, of um, the event produced, uh, the structure is, is well detailed, you have a lot of things, but one thing is, Every event from Calco is, is the structure is different. So, so we'll touch base on, on the observability side. The fact that it's so, you can have random different format, it, it makes the, the, the processing of that event more complicated. Um, and this is where, for example, we see touch base Falco psychic makes sense. So the Falco rule here, the idea is that the agent, when it starts, it, it has a file that you load in the agent. And uh, so that's, that's great because at the end you have a global file. Um, in, but the, the disadvantage I would say is that you cannot reload. So if you want to add an extra rule in Falco, you have to stop the agents, add your modification, and restart. So that, that is the philosophy of, the, of, of Falco, sorry, as of now. But he has a major advantage, is that all those rules here, because it's a common rule, you can reuse filters. And usually you always have the same a type of filter, say this process with this file system, then because it's the same, you can create macros and reuse existing conditions. That's, I think, is quite smart. So you don't have to repeat, repeat, repeat the same, this, the same rules on and on and on. Um, of course, when you def define your rule, you, you define, uh, you can filter by file path, by th stuff, uh, by all the details we need. And we, the, the way I'm saying the event is different because here you can see there's a, there's an output, and this is gonna be one of the field that will be uh, exported in the event. So it, depending on how you define your rule, of course, you can define whatever your output you want. So that makes the, 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 the parsing more complicated. Let's move on to Tetragon. So Tetragon is by default when you deploy it with the default settings, it will capture whatever process executions and process exit happens in the cluster. That is the configured like this. And then of course, if you deploy your own po uh, tracing policies, this is a CRD that configures Falco. It will produce events based on uh, the, the events that match the policy that has been defined. And uh, when, when, when Falco is really, really in the eBPF philosophy, so you basically you attach, you, it's a notion of attaching a kprob, so kernel function, uprob user functions, trace points, uh, kernel events, uh, and then you can also have LLSM. So it's, it's really powerful. Uh, you will touch base on in, in the next slides. And the, the way the event is structured, it's wow, it's so dense. Uh, you have the process, the parent, you have so much details. You will see touch base on observability. It has, an, it has a, ma a major advantage, also maybe a disadvantage because it comes with the price. On the policy side, uh, well, first you have to attach the hook point. Is it gonna be a kernel function? It's gonna be uprob. Once you have it, you don't have to create plugins. It has a way of capturing the functions. But the problem is that here, I am uh, looking at, oh, I want the index zero from the function. So first you need to figure out what is the index zero of the functions. So you need to know all the functions. And then also when you capture it, then you say, okay, now I need to convert it to have a human text out of that function. So you need to, to map it to a type. So that brings this configuration kind of complex. 
So you need to know a lot of, on the kernel side to make it very uh, useful. And then, of course, once you have that defined, you can then create filters or selectors based on, on the capture details, based on process, the user, user, based on everything. It's so, so, so powerful. And then last is, of course, uh, Tetra One has the ability to enforce, but not just block. You can do so many great things about it. That is crazy. And one downside, I would say, with Tetragon, even now they have a repo with, with ex uh, examples of uh, policies. They don't come with predefined rules. So you, you have something that was completely empty, and then you have to be creative. Or you have to go to repo and look at what the neighbors did to, to start up your, your adventure with Tetragon. Cube Armor is, uh, is when you deploy it, it won't, it's not going to produce any events, nothing. Um, it will basically only produce events once you deploy policies, which is makes sense. And also, you can also have an option to say, I want to turn on events. So you can then get events from process details, file details, network details, and so on. So at the end, it captures everything we need, the process, the file, the networking, what we, what we need. What is interesting compared to the other is that this operator works with annotation. So the way you want to add extra events is based on annotation. Oh, I want to have details about that part, so I'm going to annotate that part, and I will have the details. Or I want to have annotations, uh, details about the namespace. You can do that. And also, they have another annotation, which is interesting. So you can make a policy that says, oh, whatever happens with the network, I will be audited. So it's just an event without blocking anything. But then in this particular namespace, this is really serious. I'm going to block it. So you can have a notation where you can change the way it's going to react. And that is completely different from the other solutions. So that is an interesting feature, to be honest. Other side note is that the events produced by Cube Armor is super standardized. It's very hard to reread it. You may have less details, that's true. But it's, everything is there. So if you have to parse it with a, a solution, it's plug and play. Uh, the policy itself, so they, have, they have separated the policies in cluster policies. Uh, host policies, so the node, uh, and then the policy that you can target a namespace or a pod. Uh, so in the policy itself, uh, you can create a message, a tag, of course, the rule itself. Um, so, and then, of course, the difference with the other solution, I mean, like, like Tetragon, you can create an enforcement rule, but here you, you have two options. Audit, allow, or oh, three rules, allow, audit, or simply block. And Cube Armor doesn't come with any predefined rules. They have a repository, which is interesting. But again, if you look at the repository, there is, they went very far. There is, uh, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't count the number of, of policies they have there, but then you've been lost to search which policy I should use. So it's more com a bit more complicated, to be honest. Now we have Tracy. So Tracy, when you deploy it, it will, it will produce only events based on the policy deployed. And what is great, similar to Tetragon, it's when Trace is deployed, it comes with a default policy. So you, it captured the most uh, well-known security events that happens on the cluster. So you will have at least, without doing anything, those common uh, problems. The way it works is that it works with signatures. It's called signatures. Compared to the Dragon, remember, you have to, oh, I want to have this index, and this is the type, so then you can decode the details. Here, you use a signature, it's a code, a piece of code, that says, oh, uh, this is the event, and I want to extract this piece and, extract, and, and decode it. So at the end, when you use those signatures, you don't have to worry about how you're going to convert it. It's already done by the signature. So that, that I think, from a user perspective, it's great. So it helps you to figure out what you want to decode and what, how, what you want to capture and how you want to decode it. And last, uh, Tracy, of course, comes with an SDK where you can customize those, uh, those ideas. In terms of the, the event produced, it's very structured. The only difference, of course, is the output of the functions because one syscall will give you details, another syscall will cap give you the other type of details. So again, parsing will be easier, but there is this minor things on, on the details of the function itself. On the policy side, it has only one, one um, policy, which is the policy CRDs. The, the policy CRDs seems very simple. When I looked at it, I said, oh, it's, it's very, very lightweight. But in fact, at the end, you define a scope. Is it going to be global to the cluster? Is it only on the container side? Is it only not container uh, uh, aspects? Is it only based on a specific user? So you, you define the scope, and that will filter where uh, Tracy will 
look for those events. And then you create your rules when you say, oh, I'm interested in that specific signature. So let's say the VFS read, if you want to look at the, the read, uh, access read on, on disks, on, on files, you can do that. And then you can create your filters. So you can create filters based on the data extracted from the signature. You can create filters on namespace, on process. You can, all the things that we required are actually there. So to summarize this capture and filter section, uh, capturing and filtering, all those solution has the feature that we need. Nothing is different. Um, I would say that the, the, the well, we have the differentiation will be on the default policy. It's only Falco and uh, Tracy that comes with the default rules configured. And also the, 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 the way to react to block is only Tetragon and uh, Cube Armor that provides that feature. Uh, on the customization side, so uh, I mentioned an SDK on Falco, so you can create your own events. And Tracy has the ability to create your own signature. Uh, Tetragon, I, I put it customizable because at the end with this philosophy of hook points, K-prop, U-prop, where you can do, if you're creative and you know the kernel, you can, you can do everything. So I, I think you, you, you don't have to code, but you have to be, know what you want to capture, and it's so customizable, it's, it's insane. So here I would say that in this uh, cube armor is a slightly disadvantage, but again, it's very slight, it's very, uh, very low on that side. Stage three. Ah, okay. All right, so observability, what we need from an observability perspective. So at the end, security exposed events, we mentioned about this. So at the end, with those events, we can clearly extend the level of, of observability by just collecting those events. So, of course, we want to be able to collect those events by relying on uh, the logs, because you may have those events in the logs, or, and then once we have captured those logs, we want to be able to parse the logs. And this is why I mentioned the event structure is important, because it will, complex, uh, it will complexify this journey of, of, uh, of parsing. And then uh, the other thing is those events could be very rich, especially Tetragon. So having an option to say, I'm not interested in the capabilities. I'm not interested in the kernel namespace. So basically, you just filter out on what, sh what type of fields you want to have uh, out of the events. I think it's really important. Otherwise, you're dealing with tons of details. And, then you s and that will come with the price because you will store it somewhere. Other thing which is important is security agents could be very, 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 very noisy. So having the option to say, I want to throttle, to say, give me an event every minute or so or limited, I think it's important. And last piece, uh, which is I think the most critical aspects, you're running a security agent, agent. you wanna know if my rules are being uh, accepted. So I have a metric to say how many rules has been running and, and running and, and, and accepted. Having a, another metrics about my security agents are running smoothly, they are not saturated. Uh, I think it's, it's more than critical because at the end, if you're having a security, security uh, runtime that in your environment, but it's just not running and you have no alerts, then it doesn't make sense to deploy it. All right, so let's go on this. So Falco. So Falco is producing the events on the rule-based engine because the events is going through the rule-based engine and then the rule-based engine says, yes, it's an event, so it's throwing it. So the, you can collect the logs from the Falco uh, rule engine very easily by looking at the logs. But like I said, the structure of the log depends on the, the output defined in rule. And that comes very complicated to parse or you have to create different parsers. That makes it very difficult. That's why we need to, we bring usually Falco Psychic. Falco Psychic is gonna be uh, allowing you to have different connections to different solutions of the market and it will be pre parse, uh, you pre-parse the, 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 the content, and then it's going to be easy way. So at the end, you usually comes with Falco Sidekick because at the end, it simplifies your journey. And the great thing when it comes to the metric, yes, Falco provides metrics about your rules. Yes, metric, uh, it comes with metrics related to the health of the agents, which is super important. And again, the, the notion of limiting and th throttling uh, limiting is based on what you want to do on the, on the rule itself, so you have to re rewrite the rules. But the throttling aspects, yes, you can throttle. Tetragon, well, Tetragon produces logs directly at the agent level. And so you just have to read the logs from the agent, you will get everything. And you will see that the, the, the events produced is so 
long that sometimes even Observe platform intend to drop those because they are very expensive. So you will have to reconfigure Tetragon to just select the fields that you are really interested in. So that is a great option. And also throttling dimension is supported by Tetragon. And then when it comes to the metric itself, yes, Tetragon is insane. It gives you metrics about the agents. It gives you the metrics about the operator. It gives you the metrics about all the policies deployed. So you have, you are good to go. You know what's going on in Tetragon itself. KubeArmor, well, it's not, it's not producing anything on the log, on the agent itself. It, the philosophy is a bit different. Uh, you have to enable. So you go to the relay server, I mentioned that component, where you say, oh, please enable logging. And then the logs will happen on the relay server. So at the end, it's like a, they have a communication with the component, um, and this is how we're going. So you, either you go in that direction, or one, one thing which has excited me, because maybe I'm an observatory gig, uh, geek is that they have an open telemetry receiver and that receiver connects directly to the agents So no need of the relay server Grabs the logs and be, and put it on an open telemetry format So then you no parsing is required and then you say oh, I'm so happy about that um, The only downsides about this is that they build it on the collector version 096 and today we are on version 0 113 yeah, you have to recode the receiver because it doesn't build with the new versions of the collector. So you will be, or you use an old version of the collector, but with a security patch that is really recently happening, you won't take advantage of that. So it would be great to have this receiver updated for sure. Last is on the metric side. No, CubeArmor has no exporter. And I hope they will provide that soon. So at the moment you deploy, but you have no view on what's going on on CubeArmor. So the only thing you can get is the resource usage, which is at least good, but you don't know if the policies are running, if there's any cache problem, anything, this is completely blind. Tracy, Tracy, similar to Tetragon, will produce logs at the agent level, so you will be able to extract it. And like I said, Tracy is, is very a structured event, except of the args, which is depend on the syscall that you're, you're calling. The, so at the end, parsing is, is very, you can have a common rule for most of the cases, and then just for the specific cases, you can have a different parsing rule. So I think that is quite smart. Um, it has, what I, excited me is that you have an option to push uh, through the other protocols. They have a Fluent Forward protocol, which is supported by the Open Telemetry Collector as well, as Fluent Bit as well. And it has a webhook endpoint. So you, you can, if you don't want to use logs and you want to use those protocol, it works pretty well. And then in terms of metrics, it exposes metrics about the rules. Not so much about the agents, you have more on the error side. So if you have errors, you can imagine, oh, there's something wrong, but it would be great to have more details on the actual behavior in Tracy Engine. So on the observatory side, I think collecting events, yes, you can do it in most of the age, all the agents that we have here. Extended the observatory, yes, because at the end they are producing events, so no, no surprise. Um, throttling, I didn't add throttling and, and, uh, and customizing the field because they all do it. But having metrics about the rules, uh, having metric about the health, the Tracy is doing it, not really, but they, they have some, I mean, at least on the rules, yes, but not on, on the health, it's, it's quite lightweight. Um, so all of them have it, so except uh, Cube Armor in, in that regards. But yeah, in, if I will just pick one from the, the quality of the metrics, Tetragon is a beast on that. All right, so let's move on to, oh shit, uh, sorry, <laughs> last <laughs> sta stage four. All right, cool. So what I did is I did a, I wanted to measure a couple of KPI, measure the latency that those agents will introduce, and of course the resource usage uh, that those agents will provide. So to do that, I have a defined couple of policy, and I looked at the, the Falco default policies, and they were covering anything, everything. So I said, okay, so I don't need to customize, I will use the default policy. Then I, I looked at Tetragon, I said, okay, I'm gonna look at the community's API call, access to sensitive tokens, to sensitive files, any process spawn. So I create different policies on this. I did the same with KubeArmor, about the similar, uh, similar policies. And then uh, in, in, in uh, Tracy, I added the default policy, plus a couple of them to get the file details, the, the, the suspicious process and so on. To be able to run that, that benchmark, I did a test without any agents to get a baseline or the response times. And then I did a test with only Falco. Then I did a test with Tetragon with the default events. And then Tetragon with the default events plus the policies. 
And then I did the same thing with each tool. So KubeArmor, you can have KubeArmor with nothing, KubeArmor with, uh, with the policies, KubeArmor with policies and events enabled. And then same thing with Tracy. Tracy, just the default policy, and then Tracy plus the custom policies as well. So a lot of benchmarks, to be honest, a lot of, a lot of um, enjoy to run those tests on a daily basis. Uh, so uh, I had to build different environments. So what I'm going to change within those environments, here's the QR code to the GitHub people, by the way. Um, what would be different on those environments is basically the, the tooling, of course, and the actual collector pipeline, how you collect the data. And last is the, I added two apps that generate suspicious events in the background. So up, oh, I'll skip those two things. So let's have a look at the results. So just the low uh, constant load, so 50 users on the open demo, and, uh, and the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, so, so constant load with, uh, on the open demo. What I discovered here is like uh, the um, Tetragon comes with an extra cost of five milliseconds. Falco is 10 milliseconds, CubeArmor 15, and Tracy 110 milliseconds. On the CPU side, Tetragon is consuming not, I mean, almost nothing. Uh, Tracy will be the most expensive one with uh, 255 uh, mini-core. And on the memory side, it's Falco is the less, consume the less memory. Uh, and, uh, and then you have uh, the most expensive is Tracy. Now I'll, let's add the policies. So I added the policies. And now we have Falco with 10 milliseconds, uh, Tetragon with 26, CubeArmor with 176 milliseconds, and then Tracy with 114 milliseconds. And then the, in terms of CPU resource usage, it didn't change much, to be honest, compared to the first test. Uh, it just add more overrate on the response times. And then I did, okay, let's turn on the events. So I turn on the events. The only one that has this option is the CubeArmor. So I turn on the events, and here I have uh, almost almost half a second's difference with the baseline. Uh, and so I was quite astonished by those results. Um, and as a conclusion, I would say it really depends. So if you have security agents, all are great, but be cautious on the quantity of the events produced and uh, the, the, the number of policies that you deploy because you have, it could have a negative impact. To summarize this aspect, I would say the most winner, I would say Tetragon is from the resource usage and latency and Falco are great because they are very uh, good over time. Uh, so, if, because it's an Olympic game, I had to, so I, I did a different category uh, of, uh, of, of um, measurements, every tool gets some points, and then I had to measure, uh, uh, to put someone on the podium, because otherwise Olympics without podium doesn't make sense. So we have a gold medal today for Tetragon, in terms of resource usage, uh, in terms of uh, the ability to do it. The only downside is the, is the configuration aspects. Second one is close in terms of points is Falco. Uh, Falco is just in terms of resource is the most impressive agent. And last we have uh, Tracy, very close to, uh, to with Kubarmer to be honest. So Kubarmer was close to be a third and third positions. But again, uh, to just, just to summarize, I say if you use those agents, make sure you, you limit the number of events, make sure you, you deploy the right policies, otherwise you can have some, some surprises. Um, I did a lot of episodes on my YouTube channel, Is It Observable? Check it out, it's out there. Um, and I will publish this benchmark in a week, a week or so uh, on the Is Observable channel, so more details on that. If you love it, love it. If you hate it, let me know, because at the end, if, with hate, I mean with hate, with note, but bad uh, comments, you, it's the best way of improving your content. All right, so thank you, and if you have any questions, we have one minute, zero, and nine seconds to answer <laughs> any questions. So. Uh, by the way, here's the, the QR code if you, for the, for the, the feedback uh, form of, uh, of, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I do have a question. So um, from your comprehension, you, it looks like you mostly look on, only on the cost of ownership part of the, these tools. Yes. And not really the security value these are, uh, uh, or observability value of these tools. So are you planning to do a follow-up on, on that and then, you know, comparing the security perspective? I mean, for, I mean, for me, the, the, uh, what I wanted is to capture events and be able to filter to detect those events. So that's why I didn't want, I didn't want to uh, derive on, on the fact that they're all doing partially the same thing. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was more focused on if I want to use those tools, what will be my journey of using those tools? 
mm -hmm. if I'm not in the security space since many years. Yeah. And I think that, that I took that angle uh, in, this, in this benchmark, that's true, yeah. Okay, thank you. I noticed in your chart, your charts you had consistent, a consistent issue with Falco memory usage, like yeah, a, it started a memory to, leak. Yeah, in, increased over time. Uh, but I, then I used the ramp-up test. I didn't put, because I did a constant and a ramp-up test. The ramp-up test didn't show any difference, to be honest, compared to the constant load, so I focused on the constant load. Um, and then I tried to run a longer test to see if there was a memory, but it was not. So then it, it's like, a, there's a, I don't know if the technology behind the scene, I don't, I don't remember, but it seems that the memory is cleaned up over time oh, yeah, on that side. Good. So, uh, one other element is um, kind of extensibility with other tools and platforms. So you kind of mentioned that a lot of those things can uh, can kind of uh, export things or, or, or send things into other tools, but um, are there any kind of limitations between tools for how nicely they play with other systems? Like if I wanted to split it off into my observability tool and start grabbing those metrics. Um, uh, so could you just repeat yeah, sorry, that? Sorry. So um, uh, I think a, a big concern is when you're uh, maintaining lots of tools, a big ecosystem, you want to know that those tools can kind of um, have a variety of inputs, a variety of outputs, <coughs> and easy manageability. So um, from the output side of things, can you feed the data into just about any system, or are you kind of vendor locked into? No, it, it, so every tool, at the end, those are major events. So what I use, I use a collector, to open temperature collector. And then at the end, you can push it to Kafka queue to whatever you want. It's Falco Psychic is the one that has this connectivity tools that send to whatever you want. That has a by default this tool. Uh, cube Armor has also, I don't know if it's been maintained, but they did like the Cube Armor Psychic, so uh, similar to what, uh, uh, what uh, Falco did. So you don't have to necessarily use the, the collector, but I think the collector gives you the freedom to, to, to send it wherever you want. That's what I, I thought. Have you run these tests for different types of services, like a web service or a database or AI I, workload? So I picked, I picked um, the Open Temperature demo. That is a microservices architecture with 12, 12 microservices with Ready Cache, Redis Cache, Kafka queues. And then I, I had um, uh, UnGuard, which is an application that is uh, using data, SQL database. Uh, that, uh, so it's a PostgreSQL, a uh, MariaDB uh, uh, database. So I had two, two applications. And Guard was um, intended to be vulnerable, and I had a load generator that do attacks. So then my intention was to produce events in the background. Uh, but yeah, I was covering a representative microservice architecture. Um, very entertaining and educational. Thank you. Thanks. Like that? Cool. So regarding, I love your experiment design, first of all. Um, question about Falco specifically. Um, did you see any performance differences between kernel mode versus eBPF, any of the other modes that Falco could run under? And would that affect your scores here? Or is that something to consider in the future? So the, the, the you, you're referring to the latency or the? Latency and performance, both. Yeah, uh, for, I think the latency in general, uh, what I discovered is that you, you be, uh, in, my, in my cluster at least, or lower than 10 milliseconds, it was impossible. And then it, from the moment you start having very um, noisy agents, I would say, then the latency threw up in the roof. And then also it depends on the, I, I did a policy and then I removed it because it was, it was basically checking the, the networking communication. I wanted to check the header. I mean, I, did, I wanted to do something weird, maybe not very useful, but I wanted to, to, to see if, if I started to interact with them, the, the TCP layer if it will impact uh, the, the, resp the response of the app. And yes, it did. So that's why you, when you, at least when you design your policy, it, it could have an, a significant impact on the latency. Great talk, thank you so much. Hi, um, I just have a question. So there's a thing called uh, Falco Tenant. Uh, it is kind of doing, um, uh, kind of operation like block uh, based on the Falco event. Uh, I'm wondering, so uh, you say like Tetragon 8, uh, you could uh, customize your hook point, which means you can actually kill the process before it 
gets the capability or it actually call that function. Yep. Uh, but for Falco, uh, it's actually just generate event. So basically, if you do something based on event, which means that operation already happened. Yes, that's true. Am I understanding that correctly? So basically, uh, so it depends where, where you are because you can you can uh, you can I mean in the case of the process you can you can make the the events when the process has been started started or you don't do it at the exit so then you the process will start but you will kill it in the, kill it in the middle of, of the execution uh, with with talent yeah but let's say this process it, it doesn't supposed to uh, execute um, yeah. to do something oh yeah um, they say it supposed not getting, uh, like for example, open the uh, the network connection, and uh, if I see it open, uh, can, can I can I see the event that it's trying to open but not open yet from it, Falco? It's a great question, to be honest. Uh, I, I, I have, uh, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> to be honest, I need to double check with uh, one of the maintainer of Falco about this, but it's, uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you.